Rocket League Esports has only one tournament left for 2023 that will be an international LAN. Gamers 8 will take place in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia from August 24th to August 27th. It will feature the top RLCS teams from around the world, all competing for a $2 million prize pool. As an added twist, it's going to have a crew battle format, meaning not only 3v3 games will be played, but there will be 2v2 and 1v1 matches as well. There are 24 teams competing, and I'm going to give you my personal power rankings as we head into the event. So sit back and enjoy as I share a little bit about each team. At number 24, I have Limitless, a Sub-Saharan African team featuring To Die For, Snowy, and Darth. I have Limitless so low due mostly to the recent World Championship wildcard, where they went 0-12 in games against non-SSA teams. Additionally, their core of Snowy and Darth were at last year's Gamers 8, and they only managed to take a single game, losing both their series. If they do succeed, it'll be on the back of To Die For. I think he's an excellent player, and he could carry them to some surprise victories here. At number 23, I have FaZe Clan, a North American team featuring First Killer, Mist, and Krill. Now this may seem criminally low for a North American team, but you gotta realize not only have they lost their last four series in a row, but Chrome is subbing in for Sypical, who is sick for this event. Chrome is their coach and he's GC3 right now, meaning it's gonna make all their three series very tough to win. I know First Killer is good, but I don't think he's good enough to carry this team on his back, even with some ones and twos thrown in. I hope you're enjoying the video, and if you are, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate your support. Thank you. At number 22, I have Pioneers, an OCE team featuring Scrub, Banana Head, and Amphis. Now I have to confess, Amphis was added to this squad pretty last minute, at least publicly. In fact, I'm only finding out on the day I'm recording this, so that's part of why their power ranked so low. Originally, I was rating them with Hunter, and they did not perform so well in the recent World Championship. However, even with Amphis, I don't have too much of high hopes, but he's probably going to elevate them, and we'll see what they can do in this event. At 21, I have Gaming Gladiators of APAC, featuring Maxu, OSM, and Flitz. Gladiators had a poor Worlds wildcard getting swept out of the tournament without winning a single game. However, they have a new recent pickup, Flitz, who will help them in the 1v1 department and potentially could get them some wins in threes as well, but it remains to be seen how good or poor they will be. I don't think this puts them over Elevate, the other APAC team, but I do think it makes them better, so we'll see how they do in this tournament. At 20, I have Ground Zero Gaming, an OCE team featuring Kaka, Fiber, and Super Locky. Although Ground Zero did not attend the World Championship, they did go to the Spring Major. They didn't take a series win, but they did take Carmicorp to Game 5, showing their promise in threes. I think they're better than their OCE counterparts, Pioneers, and if they do succeed here in this tournament, it'll have to be on the threes department. I think they're a little bit weaker in twos and ones, although Kaka has played ones, he's SSL in ones, so we'll see how they do. At 19, I have Sa, a European team consisting of Tho, Mike Boy, and Hibs. I have Sa so low because threes is probably their strongest game mode. They're going to struggle in twos and ones. Tho is a ones player, but he's kind of retired. He hasn't done ones a lot. And in twos, I think they're going to be one of the weaker teams. In threes, notably, they had a mediocre spring split in European RLCS. They got some good wins like PSG Tundra, but they were also losing to teams like Monaco. So not a lot of promising uh, results in threes. We'll see how they can do here. At at number 18, I have Oxygen Esports, a European team featuring Archie, Jorias, and Ixo. Oxygen is one of those teams that is very talented on paper, but hasn't been able to translate it to results. Jorias and Archie in particular have been considered some of the best players in the world, but haven't been able to show it, especially in the recent World Championship wildcard, where although they beat Power, they lost their next three series in a row. They haven't looked great in threes, and if they win here in this tournament, I think it'll be on the back of their twos and ones prowess. At 17, I have Elevate, an APAC team featuring Virtuoso, Realize, and Kami. This may seem high for an Asian team, unless you've forgotten that they took down G1 in the World Championship wildcard and followed it up by beating Pioneers as well, making it all the way to that final round where they did lose to Secret. So they're showing a lot of promise in threes, and I think they'll do quite well at this event, but their weakest point is probably going to be their ones. So look to see how they can handle that, and especially how Realize can keep stepping up for this team, improving why they belong. At 16 is Koi, a North American team consisting of Gyro, Sosa, and Cheese. 
Koi struggled in their spring split of RLCS, but they did manage to take down version 1 in the third regional, so they have proven themselves in 3v3, and I do think that's going to be their strongest mode. Although they can also handle 2v2s not too poorly, 1s is going to be their weakest point. In the qualifier, they used a sub that they can't bring to the event, so they're going to struggle through 1s, and if they succeed here, it'll be in spite of that. At 15, I have Ninjas in Pajamas, a South American team consisting of Istromic, Bems, and Mata. Nip have lost 6 of their last 7 matches, but 5 of those were to Complexity or Crew, and almost all of them were going to game 6 or 7. So I think they can handle themselves here in 3s, especially given they beat Furia in the Spring Major, so they've shown some promise there. And in 1s, they have Mata, someone who can definitely take down some 1s matches, and I don't think they're slouches in 2s either. So they have all the pieces, we'll see if they can put them together at this event. At 14 is Team Secret, a South American team consisting of Sad, Knight, and KV1. Team Secret showed a lot of promise at the World Championship, especially with their wins over Oxygen and Elevate, and even though they fizzled out a little bit towards the end, they still put up a respectable fight against Carmen Corp and Falcons in groups. I think they can handle themselves in 3v3, and they're no slouches in 2v2 or 1v1 for that matter. KV1 can put up quite the fight in 1v1 matches, so I think they have all the tools to put it together here at Gamers8, and we'll see how they do. At 13 is Twisted Minds, a Mina team featuring Senzo, SMW, and Venom. Twisted Minds had a great World Championship wildcard where they managed to beat Moist alongside both OCE teams and they really cemented why they belonged in the top 16 with their group stage performance because although they lost both their matches, they put up a very good fight against Gen.G in Rule 1 and they, they truly belong there in that conversation. Now, can their 2s and 1s hold up? I'm not so sure. I think 1s especially will be their weak point, but let's see how they can do in this event. At 12 is Monkeys, a European team consisting of Mitane, Smokes, and Razi. Years. Monkeys had a bit of a mixed bag in European Spring RLCS. They did take down Oxygen and Hogan mode, but they also were losing to teams they shouldn't. So I don't think they'll be particularly dazzling in threes, although they definitely can hold their own. Where they're probably going to shine is in ones and twos, especially with Raziers, who managed to carry heat to a playoffs appearance last season when no one expected it. We'll see how they do this year though. At 11, I have G2 Esports a North American team consisting of JNAPS, Chicago, and Atomic. G2 had a fantastic world championship. Not only did they beat Space Station and Complexity, two teams they had struggled with in North America, but they also took down Rule 1 and Moist, securing themselves a spot in playoffs and proving they still have it in threes. And that's definitely going to be their strongest category here. I think they're going to struggle more, more with twos and especially ones, but we'll see how they can do at this event. At 10, I have Optic Gaming, a North American team featuring AJ, Rettles, and Magic Bear. Although Optic missed the World Championship, I still think they showed a lot at the Spring Major. They only managed to beat Ninjas in Pajamas, but they still took Liquid to a Game 5, and I think they've shown their prowess there. Uh, and especially what makes them so high here in this event is the fact they have AJ on their team. He's an excellent ones player, and I think he's going to help them succeed in all three categories. So we'll see how far they can go at this event. At 9 is Version 1, a North American team consisting of Calm, Beast Mode, and Daniel. Version 1 were really hard to place. On the one hand, Beast Mode and Daniel are very talented and everyone knows it. They're going to succeed in 1s and 2s, but as far as 3s, they didn't show a lot in RLCS. In the spring split in North America, they won the second regional and beat a lot of the top teams, but in the first and third regionals, they pretty much bombed it. So it remains to be seen how they'll do at Gamers 8. At 8, I have Furia, a North American team consisting of Card, Yan, and Lost. Although this team did not make the World Championship and didn't get a series win at the Spring Major, I still believe in them in threes. They won the Regional 3 in Spring of North America, and they beat SSG twice in a row to do it. They can definitely put the pieces together just like they did last year, as they are the reigning Gamers 8 champions. If they win again, it'll definitely be on the back of Yan. He's an incredible ones player and can carry them in all three game modes. We'll see how they can do this year. At 7, I have Gen G, a North American team consisting of apparently Jack, Chronic, and Nolly. 7 may be a bit low for Gen G as they've had a great Spring Major and World Championship, losing only to BDS, Vitality, or Carmen Core in those three events. They've also had some great wins, including against Team Liquid, against G2, so I think they are wrapped up for a good team in threes. Maybe not so good in twos and ones, but that's it, they're also dominant there as well. They have apparently Jack for ones, and we all know they can put together those twos wins. So we'll see how they do at this event. At six, I have Carmen Core, a European team consisting of Itachi, Vatira, and Exotic. 
K-Corp has had a fantastic Spring Major and World Championship, truly cementing themselves in that big three I mentioned. Their only rivals are BDS and Vitality, so they're going to wrap up the threes games quite nicely. And they're also good at ones and twos as well, it's just that they're a little bit weaker in those categories. Vatira can play the ones games and he can definitely win some, and they're going to have a great twos lineup as well, so we'll see how they do at this event. At 5, I have Team Liquid, a European team consisting of a Chronic, Oski, and a Tau. There might be a little flack over putting them so high, as although they've been incredible in threes, especially at the World Championship getting top four, they are a little bit worse than Carmen Corp. That said, I think this is one of the strongest 2v2 teams of Oski and Atau, and they're also going to have a good ones player in Atau, so they can definitely take it in all three game modes, and personally, I think they have K-Corp a little bit beat. We'll see how it goes though at GamerZ. At number four, I have Rule 1, a Mina team featuring Killers, Rilas, and Mosin. This may seem a tad high if you were just looking at the recent World Championship where Rule 1 bowed out before playoffs, but if you also account for their Spring Major where they made a top 4 run, they're not a half bad 3s team. In addition to that, they have one of the best 2s combos with the Twins, Killers and Rawas. Add on the fact that in 1s they have the number 1 player in the world right now, Rawas, and they are a complete team. We'll see how far they can go at this event. At number 3, I have Team BDS, a European team featuring Monkey Moon, Seiko, and Rise. Team BDS are clearly the second best threes team in the world right now. At the World Championship and Spring Major, they only lost to Team Vitality, the number one team, and they were beating their closest rivals, Carmen Corps, in both events. They're also good in twos and ones as well, perhaps the best twos team between Monkey Moon and Seiko, and when you add in that Monkey Moon is an incredible ones player of his own right, I think they're going to succeed on all three fronts. We'll see how they can do at this event. At number two, I have Team Falcons, a Mina team consisting of Ahmad, TRK, and Nupo. Falcons really proved themselves at the World Championships, not only making playoffs, but only losing series to Vitality and BDS along the way, the two grand finalists. In addition, they recently dropped their third player Ocalid and picked up Nupo, which only upgrades their squads, especially in twos and ones, as he's going to help them exceed at this event. We'll see how they can do, but they definitely have the ability to win in all three game modes. At number one, I have Team Vitality the European team featuring Alpha 54, Radosin, and Zen. There's no argument to put Team Vitality anywhere but number one for 3v3. They've won the World Championship, they won the Spring Major, and they've only dropped two series in this entire Spring Split of RLCS. Add on the fact they're going to be one of the best twos teams in the world, and Zen is probably the second best ones player in the world, and you have a complete team. I expect them to be dominating this event, and we'll see if they can win themselves another trophy at GamerZ. And there you have it. My power rankings for the 24 teams competing at Gamers 8 2023. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about each team competing. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate all your support. Tune into Gamers 8 on August 24th to August 27th to see who takes home the trophy and the lion's share of the $2 million prize pool. See you guys in the next video.